And when I was 15 years old, when I got this job, I said to myself, I am going to work here until the day that I kill myself. And, uh, hello? I'm still here, so I must be happy, right? I had me a Hey, everyone, everybody, this is Sean. And Sarah. And welcome to another episode of My Future Husband's Facebook. I think this is episode 16. Yes. Is this the 16th one? Yes. I feel like it's the 16th one. It feels like the 16th one. It feels like the 100th. Because I've often wondered what would the 16th one feel like. And it feels exactly like I thought it would. Well, that's good. It feels like 100 to me. 100? Yeah. It's an old hat. It is old hat. It's old hat. It's getting sick of my voice. <laughs> Well, you shouldn't listen to yourself. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, we're going to do something a little different today. We're going to kind of, uh, I guess, swap our normal like structure. Uh, this is going to be a Thor The Dark World spoiler cast, first and foremost. So it's kind of like a special episode. Special needs. Special needs episode, yeah. When it comes to Thor The Dark World. A little bit. It's kind of like a special needs kid. All right. Well, let's just let's just get right into it. Let's yeah, just talk so about like it. So, like Sean said, there will be spoilers. This is a spoiler cast. Um, so, if you haven't seen it yet, turn it off. Yeah, and if you care, turn it off. Yeah. We warned you. You've been warned. What do you think of Thor: The Dark World, Sarah? It's pretty boring. Pretty pretty boring. <laughs> I was I was shocked how bad that movie was. Yeah, I was actually really excited because you know I like Thor. It was one of my favorite. And the trailer's great. Trailer's great. One of my favorite comic characters. I, as opposed to you, didn't really mind the first one. No, I don't mind the first one either. I, well, I mean, I like. I liked it more than you did. I think I like half the movie. Like, I really love the Asgard stuff. I really love like that interplay. I like it when it was Thor, and then when it became a movie to set up the Avengers, again, it it lost me because it's like you're. And all those, like, Iron Man 2, Thor, and Captain America to a certain extent. Captain America gets away with it a little bit more because it takes place in the 40s. Yeah. But they're all just there to be precursors to the, to Avengers, the Avengers. Yes. In, in a kind of an obnoxious, distracting way, where it literally takes away from the actual story it's telling. And okay. And they all have, like, weak villains, and, like, just their plots are kind of muddled, you know? I mean, as far as, like, trying to tell, like, the, a contained story for that movie... In a lot of ways, it's almost like just it's kind of almost too beholden to comic book structure and the way that comic books will have kind of weaker issues. Yeah. To set up like their big, the big event, their big event issues and stuff like that. So, and the movies are actually kind of very similar in that respect. The standalones are. Yeah. Um. And then, and much to my surprise, once you get to the end of Thor: The Dark World, you realize, oh shit. This whole movie just only exists so they can set up the fucking next Avengers movie. We're actually the third one. And the... What is it? Um... Because they, they are introducing, for realsies, the Infinity Gems and yeah. what the Infinity Gems are. Like So, all these movies always have a MacGuffin. They always have like a deus ex machina like type of element. Right. And like the Avengers and Thor and Captain America all use the Tesseract. Yeah. Which is one of the Infinity Gems, apparently. And this one, it uses, like, this dark energy thing. The ether. The ether. Aether. Well, it's aether. spelled aether, but it's said ether. Ether. It's supposed to be the substance above the air in the world. In There you go. Drop, drop that comic knowledge, because I don't know. Well, it's not just comic knowledge. It was just common knowledge. There's a lot of philosophers in times that there was another level of substance to the atmosphere. Yeah, they call it the ether. ether. Yeah. So that's where it comes from, but what it is... Also, it's... some people huff it. Yes. Not the same thing. No. <laughs> Although in Thor of the Dark Worlds, it is kind of the same thing. Well, considering that, ether, that... that ether spells an E. This one's A-E. T-H-E-R. You're such a snob. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. No, I know. I was just making a joke, literalist. Wasn't that funny? Sucked the fun out of the room. Well, well I was going to say, because in Thor of the Dark World, the ether, ether, whatever you want to call it, is actually kind of ingested by a person. So that's yeah. the connection I was making, and that's the joke I was making. It wasn't Thanks a... for ruining it. You're welcome. Miss Dane Cook over here. No, I'm just kidding. 
I'm not talking to you the rest of the night. This podcast is over. Goodbye. Drop the mic. Boom. Boom. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it kind of like... And that's another thing problem I always had with these movies is like they are like just... They're not complete in their own because they're not allowed to be because they're just there to set up their events. The events, which in, no, the, I mean, in the events yeah, in the cinematic no, universe fair. of the Avengers films. You know, and I don't think Iron Man 3 did that though, really. In a, like, really obverse way. Actually, Iron Man 3 is a great, like, use usage of the history that had come, like, before it in the, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and still t- told its own contained story. No, that's what I mean. And then, no, that's what, yeah. Yeah, and then it didn't, it wasn't so obviously and overtly, over, overtly. <laughs> yeah, because Iron Man 3 doesn't really set anything up, does it? Iron Man 3? Not, what? not really. I mean, yeah, it felt very contained. Because there was, I think, there was a little bit of a, a concern on their part whether Robert Downey Jr. really wanted to continue the character. Which he should, because he's a fantastic Tony Stark. Well, I know, but th- that, that'll be like his fifth time doing it. So he's like... It's a little... I understand. Like, it's kind of like, all right, maybe I, I should get, get out while the getting's good, if you will. Like... Mm. And I think Iron Man 3 is a good note to end on, then. Well, in Iron Man 3, it kind of does close his arc... In a lot of ways. I mean, it's still open. You can still obviously go on with that character. But as far as, like, the emotional journey that was started in the original Iron Man and kind of his maturity and everything like that, like, does come to a close. And he comes to, like, a realization and a collective, like, idea about, like, his place in the universe. Yeah. And what it means to be Iron Man and the responsibilities no, of I, it. Yeah. And, and I, um, side note, I, I said this to you when we rewatched we, we the Avengers before we went and saw Thor. Yeah. The Dark World. And I always noticed why is always Tony Stark shit getting fucked up in all these movies? Yeah, like his right. buildings, his house. Because he, uh, Tony Stark in those movies, the movies that he's in, is a lot like Wolverine and the X Men movies. Yeah, he's the main character. No, I understand. So all the thi- all the central conflicts kind of have to surround him. Yeah, and his enough. stuff. Fair you know enough. I mean? But I feel bad for the guy. But he's got money yeah, to fix He's got it. money. He's good. He's yeah. fine. I think he'll be okay. He's not <laughs> going to be like Bruce Wayne and let some some terrorist organization, you know, s- do some uh, dangerous trading and <laughs> lose all his money. But to continue <laughs> on what you were saying, I kind of feel Thor. He says that he's going to be the guardian of, guardian of all the realms, of all the nine realms, and he's going to be the guardian of Earth. He doesn't want to be king. And I think they tried to make that very poignant at the end of the Dark World. But I didn't really believe it or really see it, like feel its relevance. So you don't really get that aspect of Thor that he is going to be the protector of Earth from Asgard. Yeah, which actually, is like yeah. the big thing about Thor. There is no like cohesiveness to that story, like that, like that arc, right? Yeah, it's like implied but never really developed. Other than like his relationship with his Jane woman, like that's why he feels it's it's kind of really weak. Yeah, there's no, it's not him saying, like, you know, these are people, too, that need to be defended, and I have the power to do so. Yeah, like, these are the most, at a disadvantage, beings in all the realms. Right. Because they don't have, like, the magic and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, because even yeah. in this movie, they mention that Thor kind of neglected Earth because he had to fight for the other realms. So, he's not really a guardian of Earth, and you're right, it's only because that, cause because Natalie like, Portman fucking lives Janel- there. Janel T. Portman's... Who is actually really terrible in this movie? Really did kind of dead. Kind of walk through this movie, yeah. like uh, which actually I found out that she didn't want it off the movie. She didn't want to be in it. She was con- contractually obligated. Oh, because there was originally another director signed on to it. Yeah, uh, I can't remember her name. It was a female director, and uh, once that director left the project for creative differences, she wanted out. Like she was very unhappy about it. And she let it be known. Oh, I didn't know that. And so I think what you're seeing there is kind of that. Because there's not even, like, any chemistry between her and Chris Hemsworth, even. Which, like she's crazy. Yeah, how can you not have chemistry with a man so charming? He's adorable. But this, this the thing with this movie is, like, it's so stuffed with, like, concepts. It's very much it falls under, like, sequelitis. Yep. They're trying to do so Got much. The that it has no time to actually pay off, like, anything that it's doing. Yeah. Just, like, exposition because they constantly have to make sure you understand what's happening, what they have to do. So they talk about the fact that the worlds are lining up and the and the dimensions or whatever kind of intermingle or whatever. And it only and happens once every 15,000 years. Yeah. Is it 15,000? Or is it 1,500? No, I thought it was 5,000. Oh, there's a 5 in there. 
Yeah. One of those things with fives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 45. 50. Five. <laughs> 500,000 years. Five kajillion years. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> it's a long fucking no, time. No, it's, fi- it's 5,000 years because uh, Malekith, mm-hmm. uh, the, <laughs> the cardboard cutout villain... That you know nothing about and don't care about at you to any know, degree. You just know he's a dark elf. And you barely know why he wants to do what he wants to do. Because <laughs> he has no development whatsoever. Well, he was asleep for 5,000 years. Oh, okay. And then he wakes, they wake him up for this for Oh, this he gets thing. woken up by the ether. Is that what he gets woken up? When that when the ether gets like activated? Yeah, because that's when, when the ether gets activated, yeah, it gives right. power back to the dark elves. Well, the, See, uh, who's paying attention? You were paying attention. Very, very well done. <laughs> Yay, gold star. <laughs> For Sarah, this is a big deal. Shut up. <laughs> Get out of town. I'm kidding. No, you're not. You're Come half on. kidding. Half kidding. <laughs> yeah. Can't take out your phone in a movie theater. You know oh, what I'm fuck off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, America? Anyways, but, uh, yeah, it's just like, and then I, Thor, like, they imply the arc, like he said, like, about him not really wanting to be the king, and yeah. not wanting, but I didn't even remember that really being a thing. Until Anthony Hopkins or Odin, Woden uh, has that conversation with him in the, at the end of the movie. I don't even remember them talking about like. No, he kind of says he. No, you're right because in the first Thor, he talks about how he will be a he will make him crown. Well, and that's the whole the whole part of it is like the Thor's arc. Yeah, is hubris and like his pride and his arrogance, and he's already gone through that journey th- through <laughs> the first Thor. And the Avengers. So in this one, he was kind of boring. Like it's Chris Hemsworth is a really good Thor, and he's very charismatic. And I think handsome. He, he's handsome, and he does a really great job. I think, but like he had nothing to do, and there was no growth. I didn't feel like he learned anything, or anything really happened. But those muscles grew because he still kind of does the same things that he was doing in the other one. Like I'll trust Loki again. Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Which. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, which is another problem I have with that movie. Like, I understand Loki's very popular. Yeah, he's a fan favorite. But you gotta use him and then not use him. It's almost like he... Why is Loki part of the cast? Like, he's a staple now. Like, he's one of the Marvel characters. Is that the way it is in the comic books? I'm not super familiar with Thor. There, so. There is a big... There is a lot of tension with Loki and Thor. And he was a big prominent character. Yeah. He's actually listed on several... Like, if you look up the, like, top supervillains, oh, he's well, always yeah. on there. He's always on there, yeah. Yeah, and, like, there was a lot of struggle between the brothers. I actually have a really sweet which issue, makes, which, which one of the sense. covers is, like, badass showdown picture of Thor versus Loki. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, check that out. It's over there. It's over there. It might, or it might be in the box at home. I don't know. Okay. So if it's in the box at home, I'll have to get it. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing with this movie, it's, like, I mean, just from a basic, like, just plot development and stuff like that, it's just really weak. And in a weird way, it's like another one of these instances with the, these like these big blockbuster movies where like not a lot happens. And I don't care about Kat Denning's character. I don't know why that's. Oh my god! Like this movie. Dude, in the fir- okay, even in the first movie, her character was just a whole bunch of like, LOL, and like literally she would say LOL, or she yeah. was like texting and she was like a dumb teenager that you know blah blah. Honest to blog. Honest to blog. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Ugh. No, and it bothers me, and then, like, the fact that she's still, like, there's a good chunk of the movie where it's her, like, being kind of whiny. Well, it's... This movie, like, is so tonally all over the place. Because yeah. it wants you to, it to be dark and serious, and other times it's, like, a wacky comedy, and people only speak in quips. Uh, which yeah. gets really grating after a while, and it also makes it less special, when it, or it makes things actually less funny as it goes and on. It, doesn't, it, it takes, gets like wearing on you. And it wears it take, on you. It takes away from Loki's playful nature. I understand Loki's playful in a way because he's yeah. always like trying to like doing the flip side of things. But like it takes away from his playful nature, and you're just like oh, you're just like kind of a dumb douchebag. <laughs> yeah, it does get like that. Where you're just like, come on, dude. Like, whatever. It's like you know, in the first Thor, I thought they used it effectively. His playful nature in Avengers, I think they did a really great job with Loki. Yeah. Um, in this one, it was like overkill. It's like, oh, this is what fans respond to. This is why they like Loki. So let's just fucking pump the script full of Loki just cracking wise all the time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, and it's just... I, I like know. her. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It, it was so bad. 
Like, the more I think about that movie, the less I like it. Because when you were, we were in the car and you said to me, like, I actually think that was worse than the first one. And I was like, I don't really know. But, like, now that I've, like, sat on it, I was like, yeah, I think I agree with you. I think the first one's just more cohesive. It just makes more sense. Even though I don't like the first one very much. It's still better. It's still better. Yeah. Because even though, like, it's, it gets weak in its second half, like, it still makes sense. Like, this one doesn't even really make that much sense in a way. Like, it, 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 it resolves things really fast, too. Yeah, it was super rushed. Like, the last 30 minutes are, like, a, so many things happen. Yeah. Like, it's like... And because they spent an hour dicking around in the beginning of the movie. It was so weird. Yeah. Like, I was like, like when is this hour- movie going to start? Why do I care that Natalie Portman's going on a date? Well, I understand. You know why they did that? It's because they were trying to set up the two... There's two love triangles. There was yeah. the one with, like... Or they were trying to set up, like, a love conflict situation, right? Because no, Thor... I- Odin wants Thor to, like, basically be like, why don't you pay attention to one of your comrades, Sif? The, yeah. Uh, who's a fantastic... Which, uh, that's another... Well, I'm going to talk about that afterwards. But anyways. So, oh, like, Jesus. so Odin wants to, like, talk... Uh, wants him to kind of be with Sif and, like, you know, be somebody of your kind and of your ilk and of your stature. And, like... And Thor wants to be with Natalie Portman. And that... So, but to give, like, her character, quote-unquote like, some dynamic or whatever, she has to have, like, a love interest. Get her mind off of Thor, because he hasn't been bad. But it's just there to create conflicts, but then, if you're gonna set it up, like, why don't you do anything with it? And then if you are gonna have it, why couldn't they... Because it's been two years, apparently, have gone by since the original Thor, like, in their timeline. Why couldn't she have been dating this dude for, like, a year and actually make it a thing? Yeah, because instead of him just being in the car with her at one point, and her talking on... The cell phone to that guy and him being like, who is that? Like, and that's all they do with it. And that's a joke. Yeah, oh no, it's actually when they're in, like, the... They, that's where they how they find yeah. the portal back to oh, Earth yeah, or whatever. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, portal back to Earth, like, he calls her, she's like, I have cell reception, like, oh, blah, blah, blah. He's like, who is that? Yeah. But it's not, it doesn't cause any tension. No, it's it's almost, it's totally superfluous. It's not even needed. No, that's what I meant. That's yeah. what I meant when I said, like, why do I care that she even went on that date? Like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And that was, like, a good 20 minutes of the movie. <laughs> yeah, the first hour is, like, <laughs> incredibly. I just, like, shake my head, like, what is going on? Like, I was in the movie theater, like, like as every minute ticked by, like, my heart just dropping. Like, and just being bored, and to the point where I just started laughing at the movie when I wasn't supposed to be laughing at it. Not for the reasons they wanted me to laugh at it. Yeah. Because you're like, this is just fucking getting stupid. Like, it's just, even, even in the, in the, considering it's, like, a comic book movie, it's fucking stupid. And the fights were boring. Fights weren't that great, yeah. I didn't really yeah, care. Yeah, really I didn't really, out, huh? I really wasn't affected by the mother's death. I wonder why. Because uh, we don't know who, anything about her. She's in the movie for like she's, two minutes in the first Thor. We know she's a caring mother. she's in mother. it for five minutes in this. Yeah, we know she's a caring mother. Yeah, Freddy dies. And I, I guess like... Banging the desk. You're getting angry. I guess like maybe they, they, they just... They can never reconcile like who these movies are for, I guess. Because... Like, with no, something like Frigga's death, right? Like, the, Thor's mother. I guess they're m- maybe assuming, like, oh, you know who she is because you read the comic book. This is for comic book fans. For everybody else, this is, like, just emotional shorthand. They lost their mother. Like, anybody can empathize with that. Yeah, you kind of said when we left the theater that this was made for, like, 15, 16-year-olds. And no, to prove that, we went and saw it with your young sister who's around that age. I thought she it was, liked it. I thought it was made for, like, 15-year-old girls, specifically. Yeah, and she loved it. It's very, like, in the vein of, like, shows... Like, CW shows, almost. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's yeah. kind of, like, how it felt. Yeah, a little bit. You know, with a big budget. Yeah. Where you got your, your hunky heroes, and they're, they're kind of romantic entanglements, and, like... And just, like, just melodrama that's not very good, or earned. Is One Tree Hill. <laughs> it's not earned. Like it's One Tree Hill. Well, I mean, like even like Smallville and stuff like that. I never watched Smallville. It, it's, it's made for teenagers. Like it's what it is. Like it's made for like fourteen year old girls. Like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which is Buffy the Vampire Slayer is, overall is pretty well done. Um, but there is that's it. Kind of like felt like watching like a bad episode of television, just like dragged out for an extra half hour. More than that, it felt super long. 
It did, and it's under two hours, too. Like, it's not even as long as, I think, the first door. Yeah, because I even remember looking... I looked at my phone to see what time it was, and I was like, we still have an hour left. Oh, my God. I mean, I, w- I would actually hope that they actually cut a lot of this movie out, because if this is kind of like a representation of their script, like, I don't know, what. The, how the fuck did this get into production? How is this the story they chose? Yeah, I don't know. And another thing, and this is a question I have for you. Sure. Because you're, you're way more familiar with the Thor mythos in the Marvel Universe than I am, but, like, are his, like, cohorts, his comrades, like, a big part of Thor? Like, Not, not really. Not really? Not, like, huge. Like, like in he- the stories and stuff, they're not, like, kind of always there, like, kind of helping Thor out and not, going on adventures with him and not stuff? Not from my recollection. I may be incorrect, and people comment, correct me if I'm wrong, you know. But from my recollection, I don't really remember a ton of cohorts, you know. I'm going to look into that. Or do you think were they brought on later or something? Maybe late. I think they're more later. Well, what is the area you're more familiar with as far as Thor goes? The nineties. The nineties. I'm, I'm mostly nineties Marvel. Some of the classic X Men, but which is like late eighties. Yeah. But I'm mostly like nineties Marvel. Okay. So, and a lot of what I remember was just Thor, being Thor. Well, because of the reason I, I mean, like I said, it's been and it's been a while since I've read a lot of Thor. I read it when I was young. Yeah. Well, because the reason I asked that was because like they have a pretty good group of actors playing those parts, and like and they don't even do anything with them, and they don't feel like they're part of like they just it just everything feels so shortchanged. I thought from the trailer they were going to be a bigger part of the movie Me than too. just the one plan. Well, because that's the thing, like. I thought there was going to be more, like, fighting in Asgard. I don't know why, like, at the end, like, because I don't know what lesson Thor learned. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what his arc was, other than, like, I want to be the protector of Earth. Well, I think he, I think what they kind of were trying to push, and it was a very weak job at doing so, I think they were trying to push, like, like, so he commits treason. But he does it in the name of the greater good, whether it's well, going Well, he shows against- that he's, he's wise. Yeah, and that's what I mean. So I think they were trying to show that he's grown and matured with that, but he's also going to do what it takes to do the right thing. And take the risks. And take the risks. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was their big overarching, like, message or, like, lesson learned of Thor in this movie. It was very weak. Yeah, it never felt that Because even, like, they make kind of a big deal about the fact that he is committing treason against Odin. Well, they say it a bunch of times. They say it a bunch of times and everyone helps him do it. But, like, yeah, it's you don't, not... You don't, I didn't feel really impacted by it. Because it should have been, like... Because you he also... should have had to convince them. Like, they shouldn't have been so easy, easily convinced, I guess. Like, like listen, you're talking about going against Odin. Like, it should yeah, have been a big they deal. Don't, they don't really make... Odin doesn't feel like a force to be reckoned with in this movie, either. He talks a big talk. Yeah, and it helps they get Anthony Hopkins, but even him, him like... I, and I feel kind of bad, because I feel like Anthony Hopkins is just getting too old. To like really hold weight or gravity, he actually maybe this is appropriate actually because he wants Thor to take over as king at the end of the movie. Like he just looks like a frail old man, like that he can't really do it anymore. Yeah, with his golden metal eye patch, which is sweet by the way. Yeah. I, I love the way he looks. I think yeah, he's awesome, and I love Anthony Hopkins. Don't get me wrong. So. Me too. But I guess maybe that's a like a subtle. Maybe it was a subtle character thing, I guess, maybe. Because I, 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 I would take that back, what I just said. And I think that's what the whole, like, rejection of him being king of Asgard, where he's like, I need to be protector of all the realms, so I need to not just sit on a throne kind of thing. But it's still, again, it's really ineffective and, like, kind of watered down. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a bad drink a bartender makes you. Yeah. Like a watery, watery Jack and Coke. Kind of, yeah. Or the one time I ordered a soda and whiskey, and I got seltzer water and whiskey, and it was the worst drink I've ever had, because the guy didn't understand. It was a miscommunication of bar terms, when I really meant, like, Coke you and... You Coke. But I just said soda, because I, I probably had a few drinks in me. Yeah. And he put soda water in there. Give me some of that tonic. Yeah, gave me some soda water with whiskey. It was literally the worst thing ever. That sounds so I would, terrible. So I compare that to this movie. Okay. <laughs> this being the worst thing ever. Yeah, one of them. I don't, I don't know if it's the worst. No, but it's like a really watered down, spritzy drink. Okay. Another thing. It's flavors that shouldn't meld in your mouth. They should not be together. Yeah. yeah. 
should not be together. No. Well, it's like, and another thing I, I, it was just spectacularly weak was like the villain and his plan. I think we kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. Um, I have no fucking idea, like, really what his motivation is other than, like, I just, I want to be evil, like, and take over the world. They don't even do a good job with that because they didn't get, literally no, give him wants, nothing to he do. He wants everything to turn back to darkness. Yeah, he wants to, he wants everything to be the dark world because he thinks the dark world's awesome. That's not. No, he wants everything to turn to dark so his race can take over. Yeah, so he wants everything to be the dark world. Yeah. He and, wants to and change the, all the realms into the dark world. And he gets powered by the ether. Well, that weird, like... That gives him his superpowers, which apparently don't really matter because Thor is able to just pretty much just throw his hammer at him. That's how Thor solves that problem. Actually, no, I, I take that back. I totally fucking lied. Stop lying. Because he throws these spears that have, like, these where their temporal displacements are or whatever and Natalie Portman just turn a knob and and his body parts disappear. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I was I was fine with that, but it's just like uh, just That's dumb. Just dumb. <laughs> dumb. It was pretty dumb. And like you got a great actor, Christopher Eccleston, he's a really good actor. Interesting actor to play that part and you don't do anything with him and he's boring. He's got some pretty sweet ears, though. What is it, what is it with these Marvel movies and, like, not understanding, like... The development of the villain? Yeah, like, or your movie is really only as good as your villain, because a hero is, like, it's almost like a given. And yeah. you really have to make a good villain, because you have to feel there's a threat that feels like a threat. Not just, like, obvious, like, I am a threat, and then, like... Meh. I mean, because even when they do the whole, like, storming Asgard stuff, I was never invested. Like, I never... Yeah, you're right. I didn't care, because I know it's going to end up, like, good, but there's not even any tension there. No, it's just, like, a whole bunch of soldiers flopping over. You know, it's, like, in the way that, like, I think, like, it's something like the Dark Knight. I was actually just thinking that. Yeah, like, the way they developed the Joker is just enough to, to make him feel menacing and make you feel like there's, like, bad things can happen. Yeah, and I and think that, movie that was actually, the fault. And that of, movie actually does it. Like, and there's a bad the fault do of Dark Knight Rises with Talia. Yeah. So I mean, that's a comparison we can put. It's in the DC realm, but it's something Marvel doesn't completely do, really ever. I mean, ever. I think no, because I think even Marvel's in, really safe, and their comics are very safe. No, but in the comics, the villains are pretty badass. Some of my favorite villains are Marvel villains, like Carnage and Doctor Doom. Yeah. But like. I just, for some reason, they don't translate them well into the films, and I think that's also why sometimes I get kind of frustrated with, like, they don't feel like the comic books to me. Especially the X-Men movies. Because well, I, I feel like Magneto's the only one well, they the spend X-Men a ton of... Well, the X-Men movies are not included in the, the Marvel Studios stuff. They're not considered oh, part that's of right. the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's right, my bad. Universe. My bad. My bad. they're owned by Fox, and Fox is not going to give that the rights up to that. They're not going to let the X-Men rights lapse like they did with Daredevil. They're not going to. My B. My B, you. <laughs> but, no, but... It, I mean, that's the problems I have with the Spider-Man movies, too, I think, sometimes. Oh, I think you're dead wrong. I'm not dead. Oh, shut up. Spider-Man you're just a Sam Spider- Raimi apologist. One, Spider-Man 1 and 2 are great. Okay, I think Green Goblin was probably the best. I think Doc Ock was... Doc Ock, not as good as the Green Goblin as far as development, development went. But, but he's, just... he's given that classic tragedy like background where he's a good person that falls. And at least they tried with the amazing, it, even though it was pretty bad, the amazing Spider-Man, they tried to develop Lizard. Yeah, and it wasn't really, the problem with the way that movie was constructed, it was like, they tried to like do this really contrived, convoluted like tie-in to his parents and destiny and like and his genetics and like, it just was dumb. Like, it's just over-complicated no, I, I and agree. stupid. I agree. I don't even think that stuff has any bearing no, but I'm in the just comic saying, books like, either, I which mean, just makes it even weirder that they why, did that. Yeah, and that's why the Fantastic Four movie was terrible. Their Doctor Doom was terrible. Their Doctor Doom is not very... I, I think he's... If he had, if they had just done the more... Because there are elements of classic Doctor Doom there. Yeah. Like the fact that they're colleagues and blah blah blah. And I think once he actually becomes Doctor Doom, for Victor lack of a better... Victor Von Doom. For lack of a better way to put it, like, I think he's pretty good in the suit. The like, suit was terrible looking. Yeah, because that movie's a little bit cheap in general. Like, just kind of cheaply and made. And I don't know why like, Captain America kept laying himself on fire, but come on. But come on. 
Um, Fantastic Four movies, like, I don't hate those movies, but, like, I don't... I do. I don't love them, but I don't hate them either. I also hate the Fantastic Four, that's why I like Doctor Doom. That's that's terrible. (laughs) That's a terrible thing to say. Admit to the entire Americas. Well, I admit it... And beyond. This is international. Oh, well, I admit it to the world, and I stick by it. (laughs) No, as a kid, that's why I like Doctor Doom. I wasn't a big Fantastic Four fan, so I was always... And plus, fucking's got his own, like, country and army. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's... The, the he's sh- just this cold man with a weird scarred face. Yeah. Well, I mean, you also gotta remember, like, when those movies were made, and, like, they were not giving those movies those budgets. They weren't, like... Because, Remake it, Because they had... Because they, they are, actually. With Doom? I, I, I assume, because he's the, the big Doctor, or Fantastic Four villain. Uh, they actually, the guy who's directing it, it makes you makes me a little hopeful is uh, Josh Trank, and he directed um, his first movie was Chronicle, which is superhero esque. It's like a, a a grounded superhero origin type thing, kind mm-hmm. of like Unbreakable, but done in found footage format. Which you've never seen Unbreakable either. Nope. Um, but yeah, actually, I have Chronicle. You should, we should watch it. Okay. Um, I'll so add it, I'll add it, it to the list. That gives me some hope for that that movie actually might be really good, and apparently he's a huge Fantastic Four fan. So Oh, that's good. So it's cool that they put that in, in, in the same way, like, and, like, I think you're, like, what you respond to more in those, like, Spider-Man, for instance, is, like, it harkens back to Golden Age Spider-Man. Yeah. It's not dealing with, like, the Amazing Spider-Man era. Which is what I grew up with. Yeah. Or Ultimate Spider-Man era, rather. Amazing Spider-Man's later. I do a few of those issues. Well, I think that's just, like, the main run has always been The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. And then there was Ultimate Spider-Man and fucking whatever else, because Marvel just... And now DC does the same thing, where it's, like, five different continuities for... Not con- not even five different continuities. Actually, Marvel does do weird continuity stuff. But, like, like five different co- independent comic book runs that all take place in the same continuity with the same characters. Yep. I find it so aggravating because it's so transparently just so that you have to buy all of these comics to fully grasp what's going on. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> I cannot stand that. That's why I'm a big fan. <laughs> so I always liked DC and or older DC because now with the New 52 they do the same shit that Marvel was doing has been doing for years and um, but that's why I always loved graphic novels. Because I don't, I like having like the beginning and the end. Yeah. I can't stand just perpetual fucking having to just read them every week. Being in a land of constant wonder, you're boring. <laughs> well, there's no resolutions. Nothing ever ends. It just always drags on and on. Mm-hmm. And it's just terrible. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a discussion for another day. Yeah. So let's get back on track here. Talk about Thor: The Dark World. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean, it's okay, though, because I think it's all relevant. Cause of it, course it is, because we're talking about it. Yes, exactly. And it's all superhero, Marvel superhero stuff. I mean, like... Yeah, I don't understand, like, what their deal is with the villains, man. Like, they've never had a good villain in any of them, including the Avengers. Because they just recycled Loki. Even though I know Loki's working for somebody else, because they have, like, this grander thing, but at, at a certain point, you got to stop trying to set up other movies. Like, I would tell me a fucking story that I can watch and enjoy and have it be succinct. You can leave the door open. Like Iron Man 3. Like Iron Man 3. It leaves the door open, but it also closes... It opens another door, but closes the one that was started. Yeah. You know, so I felt like there was, there was, a, there was a catharsis, there was a completion to that arc, to that part of that character's journey. And if that was the last one Robert Downey Jr. made and they just recast him, I would feel fine with that. Because he can't play it forever, obviously. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. I say so. But, like, it felt complete. Like, it felt complete. Like, you know what I... like, And that's, like, a thing about, like, the X-Men movies. Like, I wish there was, like, a complete journey. They start them, they don't really finish them. Yeah. I mean, like... They start a lot of side stories that... Or, you know, arcs that were really popular in the comic books, but don't ever really finish them, or they kind of brush over them. Well, that's the kind of same thing Marvel does, but Marvel... Marvel Studios, rather. Yeah. Like, they're this Marvel yeah, Cinematic... Yeah, you gotta, clar- gotta clarify we're having this discussion. Marvel Studios, and the, their cinematic universe. Like, I don't know who... Are these movies for comic book fans, or the general public? I think... I mean, they're trying to they're trying to have both, right? Yeah, they are. Because, like, you add... You use a character like Malefic, or whatever this dude's name is, Dark Elf Guy... 
I like that name better. And because I was I was listening to somebody else like talk about the movie, and they were equally disappointed, kind of for the same reasons. Maybe not with much venom, but they're big comic book aficionado people. And they were just like, why? Like, if you're not gonna use, if you're gonna use the character, then use the character. Don't just like have like this person that has nothing to do with that character just so you can use the name. Like a placeholder, yeah. It's just to attract people. Like, oh, Malefic's gonna be in this. And that'll get some people to go see the movie, but then they go see the movie and it's not Malefic. It's just some dude with his name. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because uh-huh. apparently Malefic sounded like a really interesting character. He's like a sadist. Yeah. And, uh, like, they, he gets off on just, like, torturing and he's, like, a master strateg- strategist. And, and you never, ever get a sense of anything like that in Thor. Nope. Nope, not at all. I mean, to the point of just, I mean, just nothing. Nothing happens. Nope. And like, and then you have like Captain America, the first Avenger. They actually use Red Skull, mm-hmm. main Captain America villain, and fucking do nothing with him. It's been a while since I've watched Captain America. It was like it was. It's been like over a year. Cause Captain America, I I like Captain America in a very general, broad sense. Like, and I thought they did a great job. I think Chris Evans is. Fin- Every I think actually all the people they cast in these movies has been really well done. Yeah. I think the cast is casting is fantastic for the characters, and like the first hour of Captain America is like really great. It's like it feels like it feels like it, it's actually and there's a reason why it feels this way, but it feels like uh, the Rocketeer. Yeah, it takes place in the same. It's the same director. Yeah. And, huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it felt like Rocketeer, and I really actually have quite a fondness for like the Rocketeer, and. And then it just turns into montages of action scenes, and then the movie ends. And there's no, like, more growth, or... there's. It's just, like, it's really weak. And they wasted Red Skull. Like, how do you waste Red Skull? Like, he's a big... <sighs> he's supposed to be a big deal. You know yeah. what I mean? Like... <sighs> and then, you keep using Loki. Who just, in my mind, I can't accept him as, like, a major villain for some reason. But he is. Is he? Yes. Or is he always somebody's lackey? Is he always working with somebody else? And then he's and always then, working with several people because he's uh, trying yeah. to get his way. Yeah, and he's screwing everybody over, and there's a lot of. He's the trickster. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> I guess I just don't like. It's not very entertaining the third time. Yeah. No, I get that. It's like, why don't you do something fresh? But you don't. But you don't. And I understand they kind of cast him as like a co-hero a little bit in this one. Yeah. Because they have in similar interests in revenge, which kind of also undercuts Thor's actual lesson that he's supposed to be learning. Yeah. About doing, like, responsibility and stuff like that. Like, oh, but it's okay to engage in just, just bloodthirsty revenge, I guess. Because that's what a good ruler would do. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. It's just very confused. It's a very confused movie, and I'm very confused thinking about it. it. Makes my head hurt. Yeah, I can tell by the squint in your eye. My one of my friends left a thing on Facebook, and I thought it was very apt. It's like it's the best Lord of the Rings movie George Lucas ever made. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what he said. If you if you hear this, correct me. But like, uh, and I think that's totally appropriate because it's flat. And like lifeless with bad humor and Natalie Portman. <laughs> yeah. Star and Wars Kat, connection. And Kat Denning. And because it is, it's like you know. I mean, I I I just I really wanted to like the movie. Yeah, I did too. I went in pretty excited. I loved that trailer. I wrote about the trailer because of how much I actually liked it. I know. And I've been waiting for Marvel to make a movie that I'll actually like really be able to like get behind and like. Because this should be, like, right up my alley. It's like superhero movies. That's awesome. Like, people, we've waited our entire lives to see, like, superhero movies. Like, epic movies. Epic, like, these, like, movies that are kind of serialized and have continuity with each other. And, like, that's awesome. And they're all really mediocre. Yep. The only, like... I've seen a lot of, like, just Marvel, like, sycophants just fucking, just, well, to probably def- defend this movie to their last breath. Yeah, of Or course. these movies. Because, like, 
they get to bring in all this comic book knowledge. But at the same time, I don't even know why they would like it because it doesn't like align with that really. Al- align with it, and it just like kind of it's and which I'm fine with. I'm fine with as a as a, like a comic book fan or a, and a movie goer. I want something different when I go to the movies, and I and movies and comic books require different things to be successful. And I don't think Marvel has really figured that out really in a in a, any real way. They're just like really lucky that these movies have made as much like they just keep making a lot of money. Yeah. So they're able to continue making them. But that doesn't. But then I'm conflicted as well because I am excited for a couple of the Marvel movies that are coming out. Which ones? I'm looking forward to Ant Man. Yeah, Ant Man's gonna be good. Because Edgar Wright, that's somebody like I trust. As a filmmaker, I've liked all of his movies, so I have like a a, a consumer's trust with him. Yeah. And also, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. This sounds really interesting. Benicio del Toro. Benicio del Toro is one of the people. In it. I know. Uh, but that sounds one actually of my like actors, sounds though. like actually like an interesting cast of characters. It's kind of left field. It's kind of goofy, action comedy stuff. It's directed by James Gunn, and I liked the other two James Gunn movies. He did Slither and Super. Um, yeah, Super was good. He's a really interesting like director who makes kind of weird movies. Does what he wants to do. He's got a weird sensibility, and I, um, so I'm excited to see something like that. So I guess we'll see. I don't know. We will. But like, but these movies, and then I watched like the, the Captain America trailer again because we saw it again in the theater. Yeah. And it just. It looks stupid. I don't know if it, it doesn't look stupid. I don't think it looks stupid. I I was not interested. Really? Well, you don't like Captain America. I mean, which I, I don't like understand. Like, well, I, I, I wish you could just separate yourself from it and be like, is this objectively good or bad? Nope. But she won't. Nope. Like, I don't because I think there's some interesting, actually, like subtext in that trailer and that movie about like uh, controlling public perception and like keeping people in fear. Mm-hmm. And kind of, uh, it was a jab at the Homeland Security and NSA. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Robert Redford is playing a character, and, and he walks across the Homeland Security crest, like, and then they have he's like, "This is not like freedom. This is fear," which is awesome because that's something Captain America wouldn't stand for. It's very like consistent with his character. Yeah, it's true. And so, like, that kind of stuff interests me, but I have a feeling it's not going to be a good movie. Probably not. And I don't think the trailer looks terrible, just in my opinion. I was just, yeah. I, I, but it does kind of, yeah, but it does kind of make me shrug my shoulders and be like, well, I guess we'll see. Because I'm not going to get excited about a Marvel movie made probably ever again. Oh, we're still going, though. Yeah, we'll probably still all see all of them, because we're hypocrites. But, like, because even though, like, I don't, like, I think The Avengers is probably the best one. Well, Iron Man 3, I like more... I like Iron Man three the best. Yeah, because that because that also had a unique director who does not have a background in superhero movies, but had a background in. I other think great his movies. humor matched Iron Man's humor perfectly. Yeah, because it's Shane Black. Yep. Shane Black is a it was a writer. He did like wrote the Lethal Weapon movie. Hell yeah. Predator. Um, he was a big like action movie action kind of comedy like writer for a while. The Last Boy Scout, and then he directed a movie with Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer called Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is actually funny because Iron Man 3 feels a lot like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Yeah. Actually, yeah, totally. Yeah, saying that. Totally, it feels a lot like that movie. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Iron Man 3 was the one I liked the, the most. Yeah. I think I'm with you on that. But I could get behind like going to see an Avengers movie because overall, even though I think the Avengers is okay, I do enjoy it. Like, if I were to watch it like every couple years, I'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I think Mark Ruffalo did a good Hulk. Oh, he's fantastic Hulk, yeah. He is really good. He's really good in that. I'm actually. always angry. That is a really weak part of the Avengers. Like, suddenly, Bruce Banner, out of nowhere, learns how to control it. Out of nowhere. That's his secret. He would No, he was literally fighting Thor in the shield floating palace, whatever you want to call it, and then falls to Earth... And then talks to, uh, what's his name? Just was on the tip of my tongue. Old Man Janitor. And then he comes back and he just knows how to do it. Well, maybe it was the talk with the old man. Sure. And he's not a janitor, he's a security guard. Security guard. Oh, god damn, I can't believe I'm blanking out his name. 
f- f- fucking awesome character actor. But anyways. <laughs> that guy. That guy. But yeah, and then he shows up and he's like, what's my secret? I'm always angry. Which is a great moment. Yeah. It's a great moment. But it makes, it, it was not earned. It was not an earned moment. Oh, shut up. You just let it go because you're like, that was fucking cool. And that's it. So there's no there's no weight behind it. He didn't even go on a journey. Nothing happened that would have led him to that conclusion of like, I can control this now. No. He just freaked out ten minutes before in the movie and actually had a throwdown with Thor. Don't give me that shit. Maybe he did learn something. Maybe he hit his head on the way down and he's yeah. like, oh, that's it. I get it now. Yeah. And he's a savant, so. I get it now. I'm super smart. I can figure this out. Bruce Banner, yo. Hell yeah. Hells to the yeah. Hells to the yeah. <laughs> I think the more interesting thing is like when he turned in from Edward Norton into Mark Ruffalo. I wonder how that happened. That seems like the transformation I'd be most concerned about. Yeah, that is a really strange change. No, I was just kidding. Well, I, it's I because understand you were kidding. I think they kind of uh, did not want Edward Norton in the Avengers. They wanted to recast it. Well, because Edward Norton had a lot of tried to have a lot of creative control in that version of the Hulk. He did have a lot. Yeah, of, he did. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Because uh, he was the main driving force behind getting it made. Yeah. And uh, and he wanted. I think he still wanted like a lot of creative control when it came to the Avengers. He wanted like script approval or something, and they just decided to part ways. They were like, mm. Joss Whedon was like, no. Which I think is way for the for the better. Way for the better. Mark yeah, Ruffalo is a much, much better Bruce Banner than Edward Norton was. Edward Norton is just kind of Edward Norton. Like That's what you're telling me. Yeah. Have you ever seen The Incredible Hulk? Yes. Oh, yeah, you've seen it with Edward Norton. Yeah, I saw it in the theater. I think I did, too, actually. And then I... I think I owned it at one point. I don't know what I do, happened to I, it. I do own it. I watched it once since I bought it. I don't know where it went. Good old Target sales. Hells to the gift. Like, I think I got it for, like, five or six bucks. Oh. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Want a cookie? Yeah, actually, I would like a cookie. Um, I don't know. What are your any final thoughts? Do you have anything else you'd like to talk about? No. Concerning Thor or the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Not really. I'm just depressed now. It's just <laughs> not, oh my god! What a bad movie. It was bad. I'm kind of sad we went and saw that instead of Bad Grandpa or something <laughs> stupid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. I mean, it's not. It's objectively is not the worst thing I've ever seen or anything like that, and it's very sit throughable. That's like the best I could say about it. I think if I were to watch, try to watch it again, I would just get bored and probably turn it off. Yeah. I don't think I would just have like the 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 willpower to sit, like just want to sit through it, even casually. I'd probably just be really bored. I don't know. I don't think I, I'm not really super amped to watch it again. Maybe I am just maybe one more time, just to give it another try. I think I, I like to give everything at least twice. Like, give it, like, a couple times to see, actually formulate, like, a more, I don't know, intellectual opinion about it, if you want to call it that. If you want to be pretentious. Yes, I, you know I love being pretentious. Yeah. Jerk. I don't know, like, it just... Oh, I have, a, I have a question for you. Sure. I know this is DC versus Marvel type deal. Sure. Man of Steel or Thor of the Dark World? Ooh. Yeah. Which we're going to watch Man of Steel again. Okay. It comes out tomorrow, so we'll be I watching I probably watched Thor before I watched Man of Steel again. Really? I was really bored during Man of Steel. So was I, but I still think Man of Steel is better. And Man of Steel is confused as fuck and doesn't even understand its main character. True. Does not understand the ethos of the, its main character, which is just bizarre. They redefine Superman in ways that make him nothing like Superman. No, that's very true. Odd as fuck. I mean, I'll rewatch both, but... Oh, we are. We're watching Man of Steel. Okay. It's happening. Oh, because I would really like to have, like, a... Oh, but you're not a Superman person, though. No, but I could be for a discussion. I would love for you, because, you know, I did not... I got into Man of St- or not Man of Steel. I got into Superman, like much later yeah. in life. I did not really like him as a kid because I thought he was boring. You dressed up as him though. I did. When I was a teenager, like actively reading comics, like I had no interest in really following Superman stories. 
Like, I, I read, like, the death and life and death of Superman and stuff like that. Like, the big stuff. And yeah. I bought, uh, and I read a couple other, like, big arcs. But, like, nothing... It's just... He, I always just found him kind of boring, and I didn't find that, like, he was very... A character that I, I could empathize with in any real way, because he's, like, a god, and, like, he, I'm not I'm never really super concerned that he's going to be hurt or anything. It wasn't until... And then I didn't really, 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 like 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 him and then it made me retroactively actually like him more it was after I read uh, Grant Morrison's like All-Star Superman All-Star Superman so I was going to say you were going to probably yeah. want me to read yeah maybe I will because it humanizes him in a character because he has to deal with mortality like that's one of the through lines of the story is him dealing with mortality and what they do and Grant Morrison's just great at this is takes the entire history of Superman and recontextualizes it with like this new reality that he has to exist in so it's kind of like almost very like like Hercules and his the, the trials and the trials very much like that because um, he kind of just goes through it's very episodic and it kind of just goes through like every issue is like a different dealing with like a different period of Superman's like history yeah like as a character and and like you realize like what a good character he was like actually seeing it from a different perspective like it actually makes him a better character makes Lex Luthor a more interesting villain. Like, it just does a lot of really great stuff. Well, maybe I'll have to peruse that. And then Man of Steel, the movie, it's just like, how could you be so far off, like, track, like, with this fucking character? I this, I it just destroyed the character. He's not even, he's not fucking Superman. Like, it's so weird. It's weird. Wait, he's not fucking Superman? Well... He probably does. He probably jerks off. He probably fucks himself. Or maybe he can run around the world so fast he can get his dick in his butt. Oh my god. Do we just go there? Story old as time. Tail is old as time. Dick and butt is old as time. Superman has sex with himself, everybody. That's our the conclusion we just came this to. This and more on My Future Has Been Face Fucked podcast episode 16. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Bum, bum. <laughs> okay. Thor the Dark World or the Dark Knight Rises? Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, I agree. Thor the Dark World <laughs> and the Nazi Occupation. That's unfair. <laughs> Nazi Occupation. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have any other humorous comparisons I can make. Thor the Dark World or Daredevil? Wait, director's cut. Daredevil, director's cut. Really? Yeah. You'd rather watch Daredevil than yeah. Thor the Dark World? Yeah. At least Daredevil has like a fucking completion arc. There's some fun moments in Daredevil. Yeah. It is, it's not very good. It's just, no. It's not even that it's, it's like so campy and then wants to be like dark but like what a 12 year old thinks is cool dark. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. same thing in this, uh, Mark Johnson or whatever the dude's name is the director because he also directed Ghost Rider and Ghost Rider is the same way Hells to the yeah <laughs> Ghost Rider is the same way as what an 11 year old would think would be like dark and edgy and cool Nicolas Cage and Nicolas Cage doing his thing man <laughs> being Nicky Cage you never saw the sequel did you? no <laughs> oh dude I saw the shit out of that movie because I was like the directors of Crank made it so yeah. I was like oh man that's going to be awesome and the movie's not that great yeah, duh. <laughs> Which is weird, because it had so much potential. It's like Ghost Rider being directed by the dudes from Crank. And, like, man, you take Crank for what it is, you just accept that it's going to be, like, a dumb movie, and yeah. Crank is awesome. Yeah. It's fucking retarded. Crank 2, one of the greatest sequels ever made. Because it's literally the same story as Crank 1, but just turned up to 11. Oh, my God. It's awesome. You're absurd. It's so good. It's like watching a, car a live-action cartoon. It's so absurd. It's so much fun. Like, Jason Statham is so much fun in that movie. I love Jason Statham. That's, like, almost like an unofficial, like, a secret superhero movie. Because, like, people can't live through that shit. <laughs> he hooks uh, himself up to a car battery. No, I know. It's awesome. I, I know the premise. His face is on fire at one point. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that movie kicks so much ass. Anyways. Tangent. <laughs> Apologies. As, you know, as you should expect from uh, 
My, my future, future husband, husband Facebook. Facebook. Like, you're listening to a podcast. If you're listening to this and you made it far, I want you to know you're listening to a podcast called My Future Husband Facebook. How, how reliable of a, like, a consistent, like, speaker do you think I'm going to be? Do you think this is free, this is just free-flowing thoughts, man? This is just information, baby. That's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah's supposed to keep me off, on track, but she had to work all day, so she's kind of tired. Yeah, a little bit. So she can't keep me on track. She can't rein me in today. This is just goddamn madness. No, this is Sparta. Oh, another Zack Snyder Snyder film. Yeah, three hundred. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! No. Zack Snyder is no. only a good director when he has good material, and I think three hundred sucks. By the way, okay, I take that back. I think it is visually interesting and kind of boring. Just like the comic. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good adapt- adaptation of the comic book, actually, as like a straightforward adaptation. With some weird stuff added in about the queen. Mm. Oh, yeah. Get out of that intrigue. Um. <laughs> Slow motion sex scenes. Zack Snyder, action. Speed ramping. Punch. Action. Muscles. <laughs> Muscles! Flex! <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Terry Crews. Terry Crews, y'all. Oh, Jesus Christ. We are so off track now. We're yeah, already no, talking about I don't even know. How do we even get back? <laughs> Going off the rails on a crazy train. train. Okay, well, I mean, let's... We said we'd flip it, so we're going to do what we do usually in the beginning. Is, like, kind of just make some recommendations that are on streaming services and whatnot. And uh, if you want to talk about anything we've watched, we, you can feel free to do that. Shark Tank is fun. Shark Tank, the ABC program, Shark Tank. We got Hulu Plus again. <laughs> We have a love hate with Hulu Plus. If you follow us on our journey, <laughs> the 16 episode journey, you will realize somewhere in the middle of that journey we had Hulu Plus, and then I accidentally early deleted it. Early canceled our like two month free thing, and we only got to like watch a, it for like a month. A month early. Yeah, and then asshole. I was so. And then I started watching Master Chef Junior on YouTube, and I wanted to watch the finale. Right after it premiered, and didn't want to have to wait, so we got Hulu Plus again. <laughs> and that sent us on a, a nightmarish like reality show trip this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Secret Millionaire? Kind of dumb. Yeah, because, like, it's a great. That's actually a good. That's a good thing to talk about. Secret Millionaire on ABC. What is the premise of Secret Millionaire, sir? Secret Millionaire is about millionaires that. Hey, now. That makes sense. Yeah. That go in secret. <laughs> Get the whoa! Mm-hmm. <laughs> they go in secret to towns and meet people in the community. At least the one I watched because I fell asleep. They go under the guise as volunteers for aspects. Of the, like say they're new to this town. Yeah. We watched one. I watched one from Baltimore because I'm from Baltimore, so I was curious. And then I fell asleep. Yeah. I started falling asleep at the end of that one anyway. But and what she did was it was the owner of uh, Auntie Anne's Pretzels, the famous pretzel food chain in yeah. the malls. The Mostly. Mall, in the mall spaces. Mostly. I mean, I'm sure there's some freestanding ones somewhere. She's from Pennsylvania. So they sent her to Baltimore, which is probably one of the closest cities. I don't know why she didn't go to freaking, like, Philly or Pittsburgh. But anyways, continue the concept, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> and so she went... Oh, you can tangent, but I can't? Fuck you. <laughs> My tangents, Sarah. Oh, shut up. Anyway, so, um... She went to Baltimore under the guise of being someone who just moved to the town, and she just meets people on the street that hand hand her advice for, uh, like, community organizations, charity groups, and she goes and volunteers, and then finds the real people that are impacting the community, and then they reveal their identity, and they don't give them money. Yeah, yeah, it's like these community, like, you know, to, like, support, like, kind of just basically help out poor people and outreach programs and like you said yeah so she helped out in the one in Baltimore she helped out I think you know what though I'll say this it is extremely it's a kind of a, a neat idea and it's ultimately a good thing I think it spends a little bit too much time with them just patting themselves on the back at the end like yeah. ah love me look what I'm doing for you which the lady that went to Baltimore kind of did I mean there's like an element of sincerity she's like oh you guys are actually doing really great things and stuff, but she kind of makes a spectacle of herself a little bit. Anyways. But they she, they give a lot of money. Like, it's not like... It's not like... $10,000. She It's gave, not like Undercover Boss. No, she... Exactly, yeah. Uh, 
which we did not watch any more of. Um, she gave like the Rosswood Park, like the really poor community outreach program. She gave Rosewood. Us, Rosewood or Rose Street. Rose Rose Street. Yeah, Rose, Rose Street. Street. Rosswood Park was the the garden. Um, I think. Anyway. Or am I thinking of something else? No. It's, Continue. That's, it's not called Rustwood Park. But anyways, she gave them $65,000. No, she gave... Yeah. And, th- and then she gave this other one, Carol Cares. Like, Carrie Cares. Carrie Cares, like this outreach program that helps like families pay medical bills when their kids have like, you know, like... Terminally ill and make yeah. them comfortable in hospital by giving and, them like, pajamas. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah, exactly. Going there, spending time with them, throwing kind of events for the kids to come to a safe place and have fun and like stuff a carnival. like that. Yeah, she gave them 45 grand. Yeah. Then she gave... This was my favorite Lewis. one. Lewis? Yeah, Lewis. He's a gardener in a community garden who he actually takes plants and gives them to a soup kitchen, but he's like this like 70-year-old man... With an eye patch. Yeah. She gave him a cool five grand and a new rototiller. Yep. And he was so happy about that rototiller. Yeah. She gave him five grand just for himself. Yeah. Like, it, it was really cool. Because he spends the money, the money he uses, the... He gets a pension. He gets a pension. And he puts it into the garden. Yep. That's what he does. He gardens all day. And it's a really pretty garden. Especially in considering the area it's in. I yeah. mean, seriously. I mean, Middle of really, downtown, like, East Baltimore. It's, ac- it's actually where they filmed The Wire. All those stuffs from the wire. Yeah, that's where they film the wire. Yeah, a lot of the wire. East Baltimore. Whatever they have to do with black people. Yeah, East Baltimore and the Greeks. The Greeks are also in East Baltimore. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Baltimore Greek- expert. Well, I'm, fr- I'm from there. Yeah, I know you're from there. <laughs> I better be. I live there. I lived yeah. in the city. No. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we watched that. What else did we watch? Shark Tank, which is pretty interesting. Shark Tank's interesting. It gets kind of grating after a few episodes. Yeah, because you have like a panel of basically five entrepreneurs, all really like millionaires, very successful people, and people come pitch ideas and kind of basically try to Get money. ask for money for part of their business, like a percentage of their equity, what the business is worth and stuff like that, so that they'll get like returns and whatnot. Inter- very super inter- interesting premise. It's kind of cool because you can have some small upstarts that are smart and have their shit together can actually get a leg up. Because these people also have contacts because they want to make money. They want to make their not only their investments back, but they want to make money, so they have a vested interest in actually these small companies succeeding. Yeah, uh, and a lot of them become super successful after being on the show. Yeah, exactly. Because not only that, it's just free exposure because you're on network television with your product. And yeah. A lot of these people, most most of these people, they've been businesses for like a year to five years, like kind of just toiling and trying to get a leg up and start. And this is the way to do it. It does get a little bit grating, but I love some of the interplay between the panelists because yeah. they will call each other out on um, on like trying to screw people over. I love that lady. I don't know her last name, Barbara. She's yeah. like the older woman. Yeah. And she will call people out and be like, "You are trying to screw these people in front of the people." In front of the people, this all happens for they don't like. Send the, the, the pictures away and then talk amongst themselves. No, it's all like live in front of them. And her and surprisingly enough, Mark Cuban are like fairly like honest. Yeah. And they've actually gone like other people are trying to give like these these small business people bad deals and they'll come in and be like, We'll give you a better deal even after they've already said no. Just so those people can't screw them over. Yeah. That happened one time actually. Yep. And that was that was kind of really cool to see. And that's the part of the show that I enjoy the most is, like, they're trying to stay on the level as much as possible. And it's also just, I'm interested in just seeing people, what people, like, create and stuff like that as far as inventions and products and shit like that. It is it is kind of interesting. Yep. In a human interest, like, capacity, I suppose. Yeah, and then we watch MasterChef Junior. MasterChef Junior, which makes you hate children. A little bit. Because those kids could cook, and they know terms... And I mean, a nine-year-old fried sardines, no, like with the heads on. And no, they're making like five-star restaurant-quality meals. The one guy was like, "I'd pay forty-five dollars for yeah. this dish." And seriously, it was made by like a ten-year-old. We're talking, yeah, no shit. It's like ten-year-olds, like nine-year-olds. The oldest one is thirteen, who ended up winning. Winning. It's fucking crazy what they can do. I mean, they're probably just spoil the rich kids, but. I can't take away their, like, natural ability. No. You can't take that away from them. 
And that's only the only disappointing thing about that show is like I don't feel like these kids' lives are going to be significantly changed by being on that show or winning it. Like it's not like well, oh, they, this is their big break or anything. The prize is good though. The prize is like they, they got a hundred thousand dollars and then a scholarship to any culinary institute they want to go to when they're older. Yeah. And also, Which for that 13 year but most importantly, great. the Master Chef Junior trophy, sir. Let's not forget about that. That, that looks like the glass a, monstrosity. It looks like a dildo. Kind of. It looks like you know. It looks like it looks like a like a Twizzler that's cut at an angle, but made of glass. With an M on top. Yeah. Their <laughs> nifty logo. If that makes any sense. Yeah. But it, it was it was really cool because I just enjoy co- cooking shows. I think said this before, but, like, I just enjoy, like, cooking shows and stuff like that, so... But to see kids do it, it kind of had my mind blown a little bit. Yeah, no, it was... When you were telling me about it, I was like, oh, you didn't wait for me to watch that show? Because it was really interesting. And Gordon Ramsay, come on. And Gordon Ramsay, also. Duh. Yeah, but that's pretty much all we really watched this weekend. Yeah, but we wanted to make sure we got something out there about Thor... Yeah, we want to do the Thor thing first. Which we spent a good time with. Yeah. For a little time. overtime. But anyways. Do you have anything that you'd like to recommend to anybody? What are your recommendations for this week, sir? I don't really have any. Have you come prepared? No, I have not come prepared. I have a, a Hulu recommendation and a Netflix recommendation. Go for it. My Netflix recommendation is Skyfall. Skyfall, Skyfall, you crawl, or something. (laughs) I don't know the words to it. But uh, Skyfall is on Netflix now, um, which is a movie I was kind of lukewarm on when I first saw it. Yeah. And I haven't rewatched it since it's been on Netflix. Just a couple days ago it was put on there. But I'm actually... I'm. Because I, I saw it twice when it was in theaters, and I liked it a lot more the second time I saw it, and um, so I, and I kind of want to revisit it again, watch it again. Like the, I would like to finish it. I was really bored. Yeah. I because I only. Here's the story, folks. <laughs> first time in my life this has ever happened. I've ever done this. <laughs> Sarah and I went to see Skyfall. We first met each other. We went to see Skyfall at midnight, midnight premiere of Skyfall after working. After working. While I was working. Yeah, I think I had the day off. Yeah. And we distracted each other. <laughs> Let's say that. And we were being bad moviegoers. Bad moviegoers, man. <laughs> and, like, I think I made some, like, kind of... <laughs> Screwdrivers. Screwdriver concoction. <laughs> Got a little tipsy. And that's just a shitty way to watch a movie. Especially something you kind of have to pay attention to. And especially that late at night, and especially after I've been at yeah, work. after being tired and, like, whatever. So we ended up leaving as soon as the movie started getting interesting. But in our defense, it does take an hour before that happens. Yeah. It's a long movie. It's, like, two and a half hours long, and not much happens. For, and there's some character stuff, and it's good, because I watched it again, and I was like, okay. Like, yeah, then Sean went and saw it, and I didn't, and so... Like, yeah, they, I was like, okay, I'm okay with it. Like, it was my favorite one, of the, even of the Daniel Craig ones. I think Casino Royale still maybe edges uh, out a little bit. But overall, it's pretty good, and I haven't seen it since then, so I, I was kind of excited to revisit it. Um, I'll watch it and so see. That. And then on Hulu Plus, there is a fantastic documentary about the entire legacy of uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street series. It's like a four-hour documentary. Even if you're only kind of interested in like Nightmare on Elm Street or even like it, it is a super fascinating documentary, just like the evolution of the series and how it was made, because it spends a really good amount of time with every movie. Oh, well, that's cool. In the series, and it goes through the whole thing, and you see how it grew and like why decisions were made, and they're very candid about it. Like they're not precious about it. Like some of them flat up like, no, that one, that movie sucks. Like so, it doesn't. It's not like uh, pandering or anything. It's very like honest yeah from the creators you get a lot of honest honesty out of them in that documentary um cause it's I don't it's not made by like New Line or anything it's just like a independently made retrospective uh and it's really good and uh it's on uh Hulu Plus cool and I would recommend that sweet deal I recommend the shit out of it I Ooh. really liked it I've actually watched it like three times in my life oh wow not on Hulu Plus I just noticed it that it was on there but um 
Okay. It's good stuff. It's cool. good stuff. Also on Hulu Plus, Criterion, um, they have a lot of Criterion films on there. And I would recommend uh, the original Blob. Blob, 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 blob. The Blob, starring S- Steve McQueen. Ooh. Good stuff. Sounds like good stuff. Yeah, very good stuff. Well, I think we've talked quite long enough. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's late. It is. We're done. Finito. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right, I'm Sean. I'm Sarah. And thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we will talk to you guys again next week. Or we're told we'll talk to each other and you listen to us talk because we're not actually... Talking to you. Well, I am talking at you, but I'm talking to you, at you from the past. You're in the future. This is this is borderline time travel. It is. Oh my god. My mind is blown. Discoveries. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>